Welcome to Hellerid. Hidden away in the forested Swedish countryside lies the proving grounds to Volvo cars. For more than 50 years, Hellerid has been testing cars and we're lucky enough to come see it for ourselves. But we haven't just been invited here to look. We're actually going to participate in the testing process itself. Gravel, salt water, high speeds, tough corners. This car right here, the Volvo 164, was among one of the first models to go through the ringer here at Hellerad, all the way back in 1973. And through constant testing and tinkering here at the track, it let this car be one of the most durable and safest cars of its age. Building a car from the ground up takes several years. And this facility is so important because the quality and safety standards tested here not only help keep those inside the car safe, but those outside too. Yep, even safer for our friends like Morton the Moose here. So, Let's get going with the tests in the Volvo EX30 and see how Hallerid is at the heart of every Volvo car today. But to do that, we need more than just an ordinary driver. We need the expert hands and reflexes of Volvo's trained precision drivers. And of course, since we're here at Volvo, a leader in automotive safety, please don't try any of this at home or even on a test track near you. You know what? Let's rock, paper, scissors. Okay, Sangha? that seems fair. On, on three? three? Yeah, yeah. One, two, two three. three. Oh. I mean, ah. they saw it. <laughs> I think you might be needing this. Thanks. Barf bag in hand, I prepared myself to take on the many tracks of Hellerid. Meanwhile, I get a quick history lesson of the facilities. Learning that Hellerid has 16 tracks with 32 kilometers of road between them. It also takes over 150 people to make testing run like clockwork, from the workshops to the all-seeing and permission-granting people in the control room. So, every time you uh, come to a new track, you just have to kind of ask for permission to go on? Yes. Okay, uh, just like politely, is there a code or... Okay, I'm gonna like, try politely. Like yeah, like, yeah. Uh, coming control tower, uh, I humbly ask for permission. To enter the high-speed track. Stand by. Okay, you're good to go. And as I was busy racing around on the high speed ring, my co-host was enjoying her time a little differently. <sighs> Isn't this just wonderful? You would think this place wasn't in the middle of a test track. Do you think I should check up on him, Morton? Yeah, I will. I walked over to the high speed ring, trading the sound of birds and rustling leaves for the waiting for Adam and the test driver to show up. a jet engine flying here. While the thrill of the high speed track does put stress on the car, it was only the first part of the overall punishment the EX30 was going to overcome. The next challenges couldn't happen at high speed, but that didn't make life on the car any easier. Different parts of the track simulate all the types of roads you would find in the real world. From the classic country road you would find in Sweden or the UK, to the highways of the US, or a charming cobblestone village in southern France. Gravel, bumps, boulders, it's all here to meet the conditions you might encounter in your daily drive. Hey, Adam. Oh, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Adam. Over there? Yeah. Oh, okay, super. Oh, for safety. 
and all the tests are conducted under incredible intensity to speed up the wear and tear of the car. Instead of running over one manhole cover, there's 15 in a row, and a deep pothole you normally drive around gets run over on purpose and repeatedly. Or at least that's what they told me. Oh no, is this gonna be a big bump? Oh, okay. Not, not too big. Uh, okay. Well, this doesn't look so bad. Okay. Nope, I lied. Adam, how is it going on the track? I'm finding it a little uh, hard to concentrate at the moment. <laughs> uh, I'm just glad I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> Adam obviously needed some time to recover, so I went and explored what I could, while he got back on his feet. On my way to the main workshop though, I saw something that captured my attention. It's quite a demanding job to keep the track open, especially with how much rain this part of Sweden gets. If the track is closed because of wet conditions, then fewer tests can be run. So the team dedicated to keeping the track in test-ready condition has invested in some rather specialized equipment. The maintenance team told me, for example, this truck allows the Hellred team to remove almost 90% of any standing water on asphalt to maximize the amount of time cars can test on the track. After saying goodbye to the maintenance team, I continued my journey to the workshop to see what happens with the cars once they leave the track. After all, the driving of cars is just part of the story of the test track. Now starts the next phase dealing with all the performance data we just collected. How are you doing? Have you recovered yet? Getting there. Getting Still a little rough. <laughs> yeah, but what's up with all this? I have been here for a while, yeah. and I see that there really is a cycle here. You first test, then you evaluate, and then you re-engineer. And until you reach that Volvo standard of quality, you need to test again. And no. this is all part of that cycle. The information collected from the tests is the reason why proving grounds like this exist in the first place. Did the shocks feel right? Did some water get into the cabin? Did the battery perform better than expected? Without analysis, this last test drive was a waste of time. But with data backing up the work, the engineers here can develop Volvo cars more efficiently. Soon enough, it's time for the test cars to head back to the track ready to collect more data for the engineers to get their hands on. for us today. Well, this is our final test. And Adam, it's all about you. All about me. Okay, but like, what's the test? No, but like, go cool then. But what's the, what's the test? What I didn't know before is that Gulden wasn't talking about me exactly, but people in general. Since cars are driven by people, Volvo needs to test the unpredictable. And it's no longer just about how well a car can handle different road surfaces, but how the car can assist the driver when an unexpected situation happens. The end goal for a Volvo car is to protect people both inside and outside the vehicle. But all this needs to be done, sometimes in the blink of an eye. So, to test the car's reflexes, we met up with our friend Morton the Moose yet again to see how one of these safety scenarios play out at Hallerid. Why is a car pointed straight at... They're not going to drive at Morton, are they? Of course not. <sighs> they are waiting for you to get in first before driving straight at Morton. What? We asked the team here what makes the car able to take safety precautions that can beat a human's reflex time or see what the driver can't. The answer? A clever combination of cameras, radars, ultrasonic sensors, and in the case of the EX90, LiDAR as well. Basically, this car has more cameras on it than we have on set today. 
Hey Adam, how are you doing in the back seat over there? Yeah, just waiting on the test driver now, so uh, yeah, okay. Well, about that, the driver is actually the equipment, so you are alone on this one. Um, yeah, I don't feel okay about that now. Uh, <laughs> That was so much scarier with no one here. With the conclusion of the final test, our day on the Haller track had finished. It was an exciting day of twists and turns. And not to mention the bumps and even some bruises. But it's all part of the car testing process. Now the only question remaining, how are we getting home? We are taking the bus. Yeah, we're not more than 